Evolution is a huge part of Pokemon, most of all by level up, some by trading, and others after exposure to certain stones or other items. But there are some Pokemon that have some more interesting methods of evolution than others. So in today's video, I'm going to be counting down the top 10 weirdest ways Pokemon evolve. Number 10, Porygon. While trading is a pretty standard way for Pokemon to evolve, Porygon lands the spot for being the only Pokemon capable of evolving this way twice. In Generation 2, the upgrade held item was introduced, allowing Porygon to evolve into Porygon 2 when traded. And then two generations later, Sinnoh gave us the dubious disc, which evolves Porygon 2 into Porygon Z. To date, it is the only three-stage Pokemon that can be legitimately obtained at level 1. Number 9. Eevee into Sylveon. Sylveon is definitely the evolution with the most awkward method of evolution, because there are three requirements in total. First, you've got to get Sylveon to two hearts worth of affection. Do note that this is so much easier and refreshing to me. In a me, you've got to pet your Eevee a bunch of times, then play mini games to get Pokebuffs, feed them to your Eevee and repeat the cycle until you're at two hearts. But in Sun and Moon's refresh, one Rainbow Beam will automatically raise any Pokemon's affection from zero to three hearts, and it only takes another two to completely max it out to five. It's crazy! The second requirement for evolving Eevee into Sylveon is the one that I always forget though. Eevee will need to know at least one fairy type move. It makes sense, but for some reason I always forget about it. Then level up your Eevee and you're good to go! At number 8 we have Tyrogue. Tyrogue is odd enough for being the Pokemon with the most possible evolutions, if you discount Eevee, but the way that it achieves all three of these evolutions is incredibly specific. Tyrogue evolves into Hitmonlee after level 20 if its attack is higher than its defense, and will evolve into Hitmonchan if the opposite is true. To evolve it into Hitmontop, the attack and defense stats have to be exactly the same. While it is possible to manipulate these stats through different natures and Eevee training to get the one you want, Hitmontop is definitely the most challenging of the three to get because the attack and defense stats can't even have a single point difference, or you won't get a hit on top. Simple as that. Number 7, Wurmple. Now, Wurmple's case is pretty similar to Tyrogue's, but it just ranks above it. Wurmple has two possible evolutions, Silcoon and Cascoon, which then go on to evolve into Beautifly and Dustox. But how do you control what your Wurmple evolves into? Well, in short, you can't. Wurmple's evolution is determined by its personality value, a number which there is no way of even seeing in-game. So it's essentially a 50-50 chance of getting either one, which may not sound like a big deal, but let's say the Wurmple is shiny, and you particularly want one evolution over the other. Please be Cascoon, please be Cascoon, please be Cascoon! It's Silcoon, god damn- Number 6, Mantike. Most of the baby Pokemon introduced in Generation 4 have some kind of special requirement to evolve. Bonsai and Mime Jr. evolve after learning the move Mimic, which is pretty clever when you think about it, but I think that Mantike's method of evolution is a lot more unique. To evolve Mantike, you're gonna need the help of one very specific Pokemon. Can you guess it? It's Pikachu! Not quite, Gilbert, but you get a sticker for trying. The Pokemon is indeed Remoraid. To evolve Mantike, all you need to do is level it up with a Remoraid in the party. It actually does make sense, considering the fact that Mantine has been associated with Remoraid since their debut in Generation 2. At number 5, we have... Carablast and Shelmet. All trade evolution Pokemon fall into one of two categories. There are those that just evolve when they're traded, and then the annoying ones where you have to attach some super special item to it. But Carablast and Shelmet are the only two trade evolution Pokemon that don't fit into either of these categories. They only evolve when traded with each other. Apparently this is because when they're traded, Carablast decides to be a rotten little pizza slice and steal Shelmet's armor, evolving it into a Scavalier. Shelmet, without its armor, is forced to evolve into a Selgor. While we have seen the use of specific other Pokemon involved in one's evolution in the previous point, I think that this ranks above it due to the fact that there's the extra issue of having to trade it. Number 4. Burmy. Burmy is enough of a special snowflake for the fact that it has two different gender-based evolutions, but I'm going to be focusing on the way that female Burmy evolve into Wormadam. Both of these Pokemon have three different forms. The Plant Cloak, the Sandy Cloak, and the Trash Cloak. But how exactly do you get these forms? Well, in the wild, Burmy can only be found in its Plant Cloak form, but when you battle with it in certain areas, the cloak may change. Its Plant Cloak is for grassy areas, the Sandy Cloak is beaches, caves, and other similar areas, and the Trash Cloak is for buildings. But when this evolves into Wormadam, Madam after level 20, the cloak becomes permanent. As a concept, I'll admit that it's pretty interesting, and gives you a little bit more of an incentive to collect all the different forms of Wormadam. Number 3. Inkay. 
Generation 6 had a few strange methods of evolution, but Inkay's is definitely top. It's among my favourite Kalos Pokemon, and I used one in my first playthrough of X and Y. Inkay evolves after level 30, but if it ended there then we wouldn't be here, would we? At the time, I didn't know this, and by the time I looked it up my Inkay was nearing level 40. Honestly, I would go as far to say that Inkay's method of evolution is the most ridiculous and far-fetched on the entire list. It sounds like a silly rumour made up by some kid on the playground. You evolve Inkay by turning your 3DS upside down after level up. I didn't believe it at first either, but sure enough it works. Try it out for yourself right now if you don't believe me. Number 2. Ninkada. While Ninkada's method of evolution is pretty standard, being by level up, something very unexpected can happen under the right conditions. If you have an extra Pokeball and a free space in your party, not only will Ninkada evolve into Ninjask, but the discarded shell will become an entirely new Pokemon, being Shedinja. As a concept, I think that this is genius. Plus, if you have a shiny Ninkata, which I do, both the Ninjask and the Shedinja will be shiny. It's two shinies for the price of one! But here's a thought. It's a blessing that Shedinja can only occupy a regular Pokeball. If it was any Pokeball, then that could lead to some pretty unfortunate stuff. Ah, yeah, Ninkata finally evolved. And I got two Pokemon. Ninjask and Shedinja. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Wait a second. Where is my Master Ball? And number one is... Yoshi in Pokemon Red and Blue. With the aid of this article, I will show you how to pull off the most complex evolution of all time. First, complete the Pokedex in both games, red and blue. Next, get a Dratini in red and trade it to blue. Evolve Dratini twice into Dragonite and then trade it back. Take your Dragonite to the bottom of Cerulean Cave and use a Firestone on it. Now, if you've done all of these steps correctly, your Dragonite will evolve into... Yoshi. Or not. Hi, I got you. I can't believe you fell for it. It's a sleeper written by JS2. You got punked. Yes, this is really Feebas. Feebas is known for its bizarre method of evolution, but it's a little more strange than you might think. That's because to date, Feebas is the only Pokemon to have two completely different ways of evolving into the same Pokemon. But to give some background, Feebas evolves into Milotic in generations 3 and 4 by level up after its beauty stat has been raised to at least 170 points out of a possible 255. Doing this is annoying enough. In Gen 3, you're going to need some Pamchi Berries. You can get them from the Berry Master's wife each day after you beat the Elite Four. Because the phrase you need isn't even available until then. But if your internal battery has run dry, which it probably has, or you fall victim to the berry glitch which affects all Ruby and Sapphire games, time-based events like the Berry Master and, well, growing berries don't work at all. Your best bet is to pick up Grind for them in Fire Red and Leaf Green, and then trade them over. Pick up has a 10% chance of activating after each battle, and then it's a whopping 1% chance to get your Pantry Berry. To put it bluntly, after around 4 hours with a full pickup team on my Fire Red, I found 2. Though in Gen 4, you can get Pantry Berries pretty easily through Amity Square, so I'd suggest doing it there instead. Have fun! And after all that trauma, your Feebas will evolve into the beautiful Milotic. I really do like the whole ugly duckling theme going on with this Pokemon. Uh, go away, Douglet. And I think that this is a really unique method of evolution that represents it pretty well. But what exactly happens when you get to Generation 5? With no contests? There's no access to Pokeblocks or Poppins to raise Feebas's beauty stat. So here, they introduce the Prism Scale, which acts as an evolution-inducing held item. But the funny thing is, if you transfer a Feebas with a high enough beauty stat from Generation 4 to 5, it'll still evolve by level up. So that means that this Pokemon has two completely different ways to evolve within the same game. And then later on, Contest did return an Auras, so you could raise Feebas' beauty stat just as before, and make use of the Prism Scale as well. It really is a lot of complex stuff just for one little fish. 
But that's it for my top 10 weirdest ways Pokemon evolve. Before I end, I'm sure a lot of you will be happy to know that I finally begun working on Generation 5 version differences. I did plan to have it up first, but a lot more research, writing, footage gathering and etc go into my version differences than any other videos on my channel. So I decided to make progress on it on the side of other projects, like this video, so that I don't have too big of a gap between uploads. I'd like to have it up within a couple of weeks, but regardless, I look forward to you all seeing it when it's done. With that said, thank you very much for watching today's video. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then maybe you should check out my first video in the Version Differences series, covering the Generation 1 games. Another video I really enjoyed working on recently was taking a look at all times shiny Pokemon were featured in the trading card game, so maybe you'll want to check that out too. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!